Now that we're able to make use of the power of for loops, let's have a look at something practical we can do to the data structures that we've learned about using a for loop. First of all, let's set up a very simple array. That array is going to take several names and we're going to use a for loop to print out each of the names. I'm just going to leave the for loop empty for now so that we can see what we're trying to achieve. We're going to show the number that we're up to on the array and then we're going to show the value of the particular element in the array that we're up to. In this case, we're looking at the names array and we use the dollar sign to show that the value that we're interested in is a scalar value, not the whole array itself. We also need to use the square brackets after the array to show which particular element we're looking for. So now we've set up our statement block there and we can put in whatever else we wanted as well within those curly brackets. Just one statement will do to show what's happening with our for loop. Now we need to set up the initial statement here. We're going to initialize our scalar variable i and we're going to give it a value 0. Because our array is 0 indexed, we need to be able to get at the first array element which is 0. Then we're going to say scalar variable i is less than 4. And that'll be our condition. The reason we're saying less than 4 is that we're looking for the array elements 0, 1, 2, and 3. Four elements at all, in all, but because we're 0 indexed, if we go up to 4, that would be too many. So we're going to say less than 4 is our condition. Then we need something to iterate over the rest of the array. And that's going to be the statement that's carried out every time we go into the next iteration of the block. And that's to increment the variable i by 1. Let's move over to our command prompt and see what happens when we run this loop. As you can see, we've moved through every element in the array. Now what happens, however, if we add an extra value to our array? If we go back and try and carry out our script again, it stops at element number 3. So although our for loop is saving us some time by not having to write this line out four times or as many times as the array is long, we're not able to, by using a static number 4 here, we're not able to make our for loop flexible enough to cope with a variable number of elements within the array. What we need to do is to find the highest value of the elements that are in the names array. How we can do this, and bearing in mind that we're actually looking for the total number of elements, is to simply give the array name itself using the at sign at front to show that we're referring to the array as a whole and not to any element within it. Now, this doesn't look like it makes a whole lot of sense, this condition here, until you realize that the context in which the array is being used is a numeric scalar context. So what Perl tries to do is tries to convert the array into a scalar context. And what it brings back is the number of elements, exactly what we need in this case. So what we're able to do is to have our script react to exactly the number of elements within our array, whatever it may be. If we took out some elements, our script wouldn't care. Let's have a look. It just goes up to the second element and then stops. 
So a for loop combined with the structure of a numerically indexed array allows us to work with our data structures in Perl and saves us time and eliminates repetitive statements that we would otherwise have to use.